Good afternoon, guys. My name is George Smith Sweeper, and I'm going to be talking to you today about how to stay anonymous while online. And uh, basically, we're going to be using something called Tails, which is the amnesic incognito live system. It's a mouthful. That's why they made Tails. Nice little acronym there. So what is Tails? Well, it's a suite of software, essentially. Um, it's a live operating system that aims to preserve your privacy and anonymity while you're online. Um, if you don't know what a live operating system is, essentially it is one of these. It could be a USB stick, it could be an external hard drive, and um, how it works is you load this software onto that drive, plug it into your computer, and Basically, what will happen is your computer will boot into that system. It won't interact with any of your hard disks. It will run entirely off your RAM. So once you shut your machine down, the RAM is wiped out, and you leave no trace on the machine you were just using. So it's nice if you need to just be kind of stealthy wherever you are. So what comes bundled with Intails? Well, there's Tor built in. Um, Tor is essentially a list of nodes and directories that route your communications through the internet, um, essentially through various sub-channels, but every communication is encrypted, and there's three steps that are uh, involved within that. Also, there's something called GNU, or GNU Privacy Guard. This system builds and handles public and private key encryption. So if you create a public and private key pair, basically what you can do is send a public key up to a large directory with your name attached to it, or not, and anyone can grab that public key and then send you an encrypted message. The encrypted message will only be able to be decrypted by the owner of what's called a secret key, which you will be in charge of. So these are both programs that are bundled within Tails from the start. There's a myriad of other programs, but we don't have time to get into them. So we're going to jump right into how the Tor network works so you can get an understanding of how all the communications are routed through there. So how does Tails keep you anonymous? Like I've been saying, it uses Tor. It routes every communication from stock right through this network. So we're going to jump right into how that actually takes place. So let's assume Alice is looking She's just browsing the web. And on the right side here, we have Jane and Bob. You can assume those are websites. So jane.com, bob.com. Dave down here below Alice's, uh, Alice's computer is just a list of every encrypted node that is on the Tor network. Um, every communication, like I said before, is encrypted. Uh, it's mostly encrypted using public and private keys, but it's also encrypted using RSA algorithms, which we don't have time to go into as well. It's a very deep topic. So everything with a plus sign on your screen, that's an encrypted node. Once you get this list, the client, which will mostly be your browser, something called Tor Browser, picks a random path to the destination server, which is bob.com down here. So you will go from step to step here. Um, you'll go first to the first node, which has a list of the second node. You'll jump to the second node, which has a list of the third node. Once you're at the third node, the third node's job is simply to relay your communication to bob.com. Uh, the dangerous part of the Tor network is the third node. The third node is the only one that is not encrypted. So if you happen to send communication and someone's listening on node number three, well, your communication is now in the clear. The good thing is it's very, very difficult to track where the communication came through or came from by jumping back through the nodes. Matter of fact, you don't know which node, or the nodes don't know which node they had been speaking to previously. I'll be able to give you another example of that in a moment. So let's say you are now looking at jane.com, or you were previously looking at bob.com, now you're looking at jane.com. Every time you request to go to a new client or a new end route, the Tor network and the Onion system, which is basically 
another layer underneath, is smart enough to know that you're looking for a new website or you're looking for a new address and not to use the same path you were just on. Um, a lot of tracking simply, simply happens because your IP address can be used to show your location. So via all this routing, your IP address will now show up in Berlin or California, but it won't be at your true IP address. So another way to think about this is, let's say you go to the post office and you have a package. Within that package, and let's also assume that the post office doesn't open your mail and look at your mail in this process. So you have a package, you wanna send that to a friend. Inside that package is another package with another address on it. Inside that package is yet another package with another address on it. And in inside of that last package is the note you wanted to send. So you go to the post office, hand off the package, that would represent these um, green arrows on the screen. You hand that package off to the post office, they mail it to that address. That person says, cool, my name's on this package, I can open it. They open that package and they see that second package. You've attached to that package, the second one, a note that says, go to the post office and mail this to the address on that package. They say, all right, awesome. Let's assume they've also been paid somehow. But they're able to go to the post office. They drop that package off. Again, the post office sends it. That now hands, is now at the second person in the chain. That person opens it, sees another name on the package, says, OK, well, I can't open that. They mail it to the net person. The last person would be your unencrypted link there. They see the package and go, hmm. Okay, my name is on that. Open the package, and there's your message. They're the only one who now has that message, has access to it, and they don't know who sent the original message, nor do they know the second layer up in the chain. So it just makes it very difficult to track your location. And uh, if you use that example, you can kind of get a grasp of how that system works. So. Let's assume that all of that somehow breaks down and someone has control over the entire Tor network. Well, you're going to want to be able to encrypt your communications in the event that everything breaks down. So how does Tails do that? Well, it uses something called GNU PGP. As I mentioned earlier, that is a public and private key pair. What you can do is send out that public key. Anyone who wants to send you a message can encrypt their message with your public key that you've made available. And the only one who can decrypt that is yourself with the private key. Um, I'll show you a quick example of that, actually, because it's a very tough, tough topic to get into with code. So I'll show you actually how it works using a well, hypothetical scenario I've made here. So. Let's assume, if anyone's familiar here with Star Wars, let's say that Darth Vader's feeling pretty bad. He's just, he's been keeping this big secret for a very long time. Uh, he has a son out there who he just, he hasn't told yet. The son knows nothing about that truth. Um, but Darth Vader can't just openly go across channels and say, hey, by the way, uh, you're, like, I'm, I'm your dad. He can't do that because his empire would go, well, that's a little weird that you two are fighting and you're related. So what would he do? Well, maybe he'd encrypt his communication. So let's see. Dear Luke, let's see. I am your father. And then maybe just for good measure, let's see here. Got Leia is your sister. Sorry if I just spoiled this movie for a lot of people. That's, I didn't intend to do that. So he's got his message. So he would now encrypt this message with a key. So it's going to Luke Skywalker. Luke Skywalker's public key is available in the public key network here. Um, you can search for anybody's keys as long as they've made them available. So. That key is available. You have to use 
Well, Darth Vader here is going to use his key to encrypt the entire string, or he's going to use his key to attach to the string so that Luke knows who this came from. So, it has now been encrypted using a public key that Luke made available, and now that clear message has turned into this, a bunch of gibberish. So, let's say through the magic of time travel here, we, that's gone, and voila, it's now back. The message has been received by Luke. So, what does Luke do? Well, he says, okay, cool, I've got this encrypted message. I'm not sure who it's from, though, at least not yet. So, he takes the entire message, scrolls down, and says, okay, let's decrypt this. So the system will now ask him for his password to use his secret key to unlock the message that was encrypted by his public key. It's smart enough to realize there's a connection there. So he enters his password. Ta-da. He now can read this message. He's absolutely floored, and his response is just in traditional fashion here. So that's a brief touch on that. Um, unfortunately, we don't have a lot of time. So who uses tails? Well, journalists use it. Activists use it. The military and law enforcement, they use it to, to encrypt their communications. And finally, most famous of all, we've got this guy. So famously, he evaded the NSA. Uh, we all pretty much know that story. He used Tails extensively to hide his whereabouts while still being able to communicate with journalists and get his story out to the public. So given the current climate, we might need to use that as well. And uh, that's what I've got, guys. Thanks for listening.